thanks uh, Channing team to, to have me. Uh, very glad to be here. So we are a parametric cargo insurance. We are in transportation. We use uh, Chainlink for oracles. And uh, we are addressing a very uh, large problem in the industry, in the marine cargo industry. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Are you guys familiar with that picture? So which one is it? Anyone? So the Ever Given, there was a rhetorical question. Everybody's seen it. That created enormous amount of delays in the supply chain and a lot of a rippling effect in 2021 and this year. But I'm not too concerned about this specific event. What I'm concerned about is the global trend in ocean freight, air cargo, ground tracking, and other mode of transportation where cargo delays have been emperoring the supply chain globally. And in numbers, you know, we can think about 2.4 million worth of containers are being stuck at sea last year, and that continued to be in trend in 2022. Uh, over 62 million metric tons of air cargo that are being shipped without uh, supply chain um, delay insurance. And an estimated $10 billion worth of uh, losses due to the disruption in the, in the transportation industry. Now, specifically, let's look at a good, the, the case of, um, an, of Frank. He runs uh, Ace Forwarding in Newark, New Jersey. And uh, not surprisingly, his business in cold chain, vaccine, medical supply has been thriving since 2019. What's also been the case for him and his business um, has been suffering tremendous amount of delay that can cause up to 20% of losses uh, due to property damages and other penalties. Now, there's many francs in the U.S., more than 118,000 freight forwarders that are experiencing the same problem um, across asset classes, so reefers, perishables, livestock, aviation part, auto parts, semiconductors, electronics, event logistics, you name it. <clears throat> and in order to understand better you know, the industry, we run uh, a large number of conversation interviews and also um, you know, talks with brokers, 3PLs, third-party logistics, what we discovered from them is they need delay coverage yesterday. What we also discovered is their policy, their insurance policies have full fine print and delay have been completely excluded for centuries. Anytime they try to adjudicate insurance claims, it takes months or even years. And any administration operation are excessively expensive for both the clients and the insurance partners. So this is why we created Autonomy. We are first to market in bringing a parametric cargo delay platform with three proprietary technologies. Number one is fast event triggering uh, powered by Chainlink Oracle APIs. And that creates a lot of transparency, a lot of security, and a lot of speed. Secondly is um, Claim auto-execution auto using blockchain smart contracts. So we deployed our technology on both Ethereum and also Polygon, uh, both on the private and uh, permissionless chain. And finally, uh, cost efficiency using digital wallets, on-ramp and off-ramp rails. That creates a lot of um, value adds for premium collection, collateral management, and also uh, compensation payments. So how does it work in practice? In the case of cargo interruption, what you're looking at is your legacy process is taking you for a ride. With dozens of emails, phone calls, manual steps, you name it, the whole process takes months and it's highly cost ineffective. With Autronomy, we streamline in three simple steps, event detection, claims activation, and digital payments. And the best part is we do it under an hour for a fraction of the cost. <clears throat> so now I wanted to kind of double click on why we're using Web3, blockchain, and smart contract. So really, there's four pillars to our strategy in terms of product. Number one, the obvious one, is uh, our usage of decentralized Oracle network 
that creates a lot of uh, scalability in terms of the way that we communicate with the on-chain on assets and our off-chain um, containers, cargo, and so forth. The second one is automatic execution of what we call smart policies, right? Our insurance policies are encoded into smart contracts, and therefore they represent the programmatic version of legal and economics on the chain, and we can essentially automate those um, autonomous entities. Third one I already touched upon is uh, the integration and the introduction of uh, fintech, state-of-the-art fintech payment solution within the insurance space. We are working with Scylla uh, for our on-ramp on, on and off-ramp digital custody, and we streamline wallet in integration and fast frictionless uh, fund management. And finally, like the, the third item that I really love is uh, decentralized capital. So decentralized capital is very much where we believe that the industry is going to get, is going to get headed to uh, in the future. We already have one partner in Bermuda uh, who's helping us essentially form risk capital in order to back our policies. But really, we believe that uh, tokenized uh, risk capital uh, formation of um, stable coins fund is going to be helping create a lot of liquidity in the markets and also helping a lot of uh, other projects such as you know, autonomy in order to provide best-in-class automated insurance to clients. Now, quickly, I wanted to kind of double-click on how we integrate with Chainlink, uh, which has been one of our first partners in the space. Um, so Chainlink, as I said, is uh, very much the best partner in the space in order to create scalability security and also encryption in terms of our access to physical container, physical assets, and also logistics endpoints. And as a very critical item in terms of truth generation. So for the people who don't know exactly, parametric, and I use that word many times, parametrics are data-driven or index-driven uh, insurance contracts that execute automatically based on this one threshold and pay out instantly. Right, so having the certainty that the uh, data or the event trigger that we essentially collect from, uh, from Chainlink is actually secure and trustable is actually a very key component to our product strategy and also business strategy. So we have an air product in place, which is a parametric air freight. We're moving on into ocean and trucking in the next uh, few months and year. Uh, we believe that Chainlink is going to remain our point of contact in order to introduce truth generation in terms of those uh, cargo element that we want to protect. And with their power in terms of the decentralized Oracle network, we can multiply and scale very fast. So that's about it. There was a quick presentation. Uh, don't hesitate to scan. Uh, you can um, link up on LinkedIn with us. And I'm glad to answer any of your questions. Is there ever a need, or do you have a backup system if there needs to be an arbitration system? If an oracle fails or something, how does that handle? I could answer that, sorry. An event, like, do you have a system where if you need arbitration, you can, ha how do you handle a situation where you might need arbitration? Yeah, there's very, uh, you know, small tail hedge cases where we involve what we call the TPA. So an insurance TPA is a third party agent. They are the claim uh, specialist. Uh, really, right now, you know, our claim process is verifying in a few minutes and approving the claims because we want to give some sort of safety net that our underwriters are not going to be sending money out of the window without any control. This could be some cases along the line where we pay out, we shouldn't have pay out, or we refuse a claim on a pure binary basis and the clients come to us in disputes. And this could be a very like, you know, kind of standard process. We believe that's probably like, you know, one in a thousand, one in 10,000 cases. What's the meaning of parametrics in this context? What's the meaning of parametric? Yeah. Like in this context, does it just mean like getting data from the blockchain? 
No, no. So parametric, our, our product is a parametric delay, right? Cargo delay. So we protect shipment delays um, on an automatic basis and independent basis, right? So what we do with uh, Chainlink is we connect with the off-chain, right? The uh, physical container, physical asset, or uh, logistics endpoint to determine whether the smart contract is going to be executed or not. And then eventually the payment's been settled, right? So um, I don't know if that's, yeah, that addresses the question. Hi, I would like to know uh, whether you have you need any tracker to be put onto the cargo so that you can verify the real time location of the cargo to know that it's actually delayed because like for some of the airplanes it might show it's already taking off but it's not. Yeah, that's no, a good question. So um, right now we have a software approach only. Uh, so okay, we have um, essentially trustable logistics endpoint that we connect, and uh, there are legal timestamp that we, we have to check in order to determine the execution of the, the contract. So they're very hard to dispute because everybody trusts those air freight uh, endpoints and uh, data parameters. Uh, what is also true, as you said, when we move into a marine cargo, the maritime, uh, a lot of the integration is going to be about like, you know, having hardware, IoT sensor tracking devices being connected to Chainlink and us. And at that point, this could be a little bit of uh, adaptation in terms of how we integrate certain uh, class of IoT and or not a brand, because we have to make sure that the trust generation has to remain like you know very uh, again very trustable. Because otherwise, if you don't pay out when you should have been paid out, the whole product you know kind of fall apart. So when we uh, introduce trackers, this could be a, another layer of complexity that we uh, we are resolving. Hello. Are you um, fully collateralizing the limits that you're providing, or if not, how are you capitalizing that risk? <clears throat> so we backed by um, uh, Lloyd Syndicates in London. Uh, so they are leverage structures so far. You know, we don't have to uh, obviously fully collateralize. What is fully collateralized is our Bermuda-based uh, reinsurance, which is a decentralized reinsurance under the supervision of BMA, uh, Bermuda Monetary Authority. So the first stage of this development is actually full collateral, and then we create some leverage uh, down the road. Um, the third part, path is actually uh, us creating what we call a sidecar. So we're creating an SPV structure in order to get capital markets investors in order to back our policies as well. Uh, that's probably going to be next year. And in that case, we're thinking 3 to 5x uh, leverage. Um, so you mentioned earlier that the freight endpoints are pretty trustworthy. So I just wonder what's the reason for adding an additional layer of like Oracle on chain to it because they're already pretty trustworthy. Yeah. So the, you know, this it's true that you know at first there's a uh, little bit of a conversation whether we should have like you know kind of a private API versus uh, using a more decentralized Oracle solution. Uh, we 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 here for the long haul. We believe that uh, Chainlink can be supporting us for the next many years. And uh, this could be other solution that could be different from just connecting to a delay API. That could be requiring having like a decentralized consensus about you know, how you g generate the truth. And we believe that the, the Dawn decentralized Oracle network is going to be warranted for other solutions than uh, parametric delays. Um, for your for your data sources um, and those third parties, uh, have you been having any difficulty getting them uh, and that data onto the Oracle uh, themselves, or is that still slowly evolving? Uh, for our air product, we we had no issues. We actually creating a high availability and you know redundancy in terms of data sources. Uh, so we create like a, a new adapters just to have like you know kind of a sa safety net in terms of uh, redundancy of data source that we uh, we collect. Um, I think the complexity, as I said earlier, is could be when we get into ocean freight, where uh, that product is so new that we're gonna have to kind of discover and explore quite a bit more. Uh, so I can keep you both the next year if you want. 
All right, I think we're done. Two seconds. Thank you. <laughs>